Church, we're so glad you're here with us. Are you desperate, barely making it through? Man, do we need that more than enough grace God told Paul about, right? Pastor Loretta will be sharing precisely about the God of all grace. <laughs> Whoa, we need him. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Zoom. Leave us a comment, prayer request, or email us to info at ccchurch.life. Have bread and juice or use whatever you have to join us with communion after. And please come for the Afterglow Fellowship. We would love to talk and get to know you. Dear Anna, would you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Maria. Heavenly Father, bless this gathering with the tangible presence of your Holy Spirit. So that your anointing and love may touch many souls. Where two or more are gathered in your name, you will be in their midst. So be it today, Lord, and in all things we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Now, Joseph, lead us in worship, please. Thank you, Anna. The song is Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You said your glory above the heavens and When I think of all you've made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. Hallelujah. Let all glory, all 
get one of them with your Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Señor, eres poderoso. Come on. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Come on. You're mighty. Lord, 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 you're mighty. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Praise the Lord. We are so blessed with pastors who love to study and teach the word. And I am so thankful for Z Church. They also share testimonies to back that up. And last week, you know, the Holy Spirit was just tapping me to be intentional to reach even one. And God leads our steps that way. So we'll be open to the doors that he gives us now. Get out your magnifying glass and get out your microscope because you're about to see more deeply into the grace of God as our Pastor Loretta comes and shares the anointed word of God. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Larry. Hallelujah. How are you doing, sir? I'm well, and I've got out my telescope and I've got out my microscope. Yeah, I call my microscope. (laughs) That's good. Well, I tell you what a wonderful day. Uh, just the prayer, pre-prayer, the word of the Lord came through from different uh, through uh, Terry as well as through Christine and uh, just the prayers that went forth and praise God. You know what uh, Mary, uh, Anna Maria prayed that the people would hear the word of the Lord. And, you know, that's, that's important, yeah. you know. And then, of course, I have to say, Maria, she just has that radio announcer smile in her voice. I tell you, it's just wonderful. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. And then, of course, uh, Joseph, the Lord, he is my We have a great team. We have a great team. And uh, actually, there's room on our team for others. So if you're watching and listening today through Facebook or YouTube and you want to serve God, you're looking for a place to serve, we'll pray about serving at Z Church. We've got a Amen. Of- Amen. I hear Terry. Amen. Amen. And I have to tell you, if you have any prayer requests, anything that, or even uh, a testimony, please make sure you send it in by email and um, or on the chat. Or on the chat, and uh, at later, uh, Terry, our prayer leader, will uh, read them out to us, and we'll be praying and ministering to you. So. Praise God. You know, we have, let's just bless our Z team, Pastor. You, Pastor. All right. Uh, Z team, lift your hands up. We love you and and we pray for you every day, twice a day, really. And we want to bless you today. Father, I thank you for our Z team who are faithful in serving you. We're so blessed to have them. And we believe that it pays to serve God. It doesn't cost, it pays. And our Z team, they're healthy. They're, they're wealthy, wealthy and they're wise. And they're wise in <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen. And we say hello to Elder Joy, who always takes care of the Facebook. Yeah, Praise she's out God. There working. And uh, Elder Bob, uh, we we love you. We've got uh, great leadership, Pastor Sharon, Elder Bob, Elder Joy. Yeah, we just and, do. And our Deacon Steve, our whole our whole prayer team. And um Tim is always there watching and monitoring. I'm so. telling you, nothing gets past, uh, nothing gets past uh, Brother Tim. Tim nothing. All right. Now listen, I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to pray for folks on YouTube. 
YouTube and Facebook. All right. Then I'm going to step out of the way because right. I know you, you're prepared and you're ready to go, right? Yes, sir. You look good. Well, you do too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> uh, listen, friends on, on YouTube and Facebook, we love you. We'd love for you to, to uh, take a moment, be with us, maybe in the afterglow today or come on the Z Church platform. But we know you're watching and listening. We, we look at the demographics uh, and, and we know you're out there and you're receiving. And that, that really blesses us. We believe that revival is online and it's starting here at Z Church. Amen. And so Amen. if you get a blessing, if you get Amen. a miracle, a healing, a touch from God, a word from the Lord, uh, make sure that you tell us in the comments or by email, as Pastor Loretta said. Now, get ready to receive. Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching, listening, and participating on any of the online platforms that Z Church is broadcasting on. And we believe that today we're one in the Spirit, and we believe that your Holy Spirit is raining down upon all of us right now. And we pray that people who are listening and watching to this broadcast will receive a word from the Lord and receive an anointing from the Lord and receive a miracle in their lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' right, name. I'm Praise gonna, God. Be right here. Thank you, Pastor. Did someone say something? Amen. I Amen. Think. Well, Amen. praise God. Amen is good. And you know, also, we want to just shout out to our uh, head deacon, Steve. You know, he just, you know, he had car problems and it did not stop him. He would just, you know, he's just a blessing. Don't you say that, Pastor? Let's hear it, Pastor. Yes, he is a blessing. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, there's Chris, who's like, what is it, two o'clock in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, praise God. Well, nobody can complain about getting up to him. <laughs> as, as, as long as Chris is there, praise God. Well, thank you for being here and listening. I believe that I have a word from the Lord that will minister to you and give you tools to live your best life. I know there is a book about 10, 20 years ago, I don't know, 15 years ago, that said, you know, a living a purposeful life or something like that, or your best life. There's so many books on the, are in the um, stores that you can get to uh, improve yourself. Well, I just want to give you something that is the foundation that anything you do, and Paul said, having done all. Right. So we are to do things to improve our lives. We are. Having done all, then we stand. Yet at some point, it's going to have to be the work of God. Unless Amen. God builds the house, the workman labors in vain. Amen. And that's for any area in our lives. Well, the title of this message, and I am going to be in a teaching mode, I believe, today. We'll see. <laughs> the God of all grace is the title of this lesson today. The God of all grace. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. However, I'm only giving you one thought. The God of all grace and the scripture, the main scripture for this lesson today is found in 1 Peter 5.10. And it reads, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. I'll read it again. First Peter 5, 10, the fifth chapter, 10th verse. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, or will the King James establish, strengthen, and settle you. Now, I want, because this is, I'm in a teaching mode, Go right ahead. I'm going to look at this 
in a very grammatical way. And I want you to take that journey with me. What is the subject of this passage? I'll read it again so you can think about it. But the God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. So just in grade school grammar, we always found or know the person or whatever is doing the action is the subject. Right. So who's doing the action in this? Who's the subject? God. I'll read it again. I know you're going to get tired of it, but you know, it's been proven that people don't hear something for the first time until they've heard it at least 10 times. You know, we parents, we know that, right? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And we wise, we know that too. <laughs> And you, you can hear pastors say, let's stay in the spirit here. <laughs> Praise God. Well, you know, I'm the one with the mic. When he gets the mic, he can talk whatever he wants. So praise the Lord. But the subject here is God. He's the one doing the action. But the God of all grace hath called. So he's the one doing the action. However, there is a adjective phrase here of all grace. So this functions as specifying which God we're talking about. You know, I know perhaps you've never really thought about that when you read this scripture, but it's specifically saying the God of all grace. So that if there's any question in your mind, about who we are talking about in this sentence, then it has to be clarified that the one and only God who possesses all grace, everyone, all the other gods, dismissed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The God, so here it is, but the God of all grace. Now we know who. Who's the subject? We know who is doing the action in this verse. Hath, what's the, what's the verb here? It's two words here. It's hath call. Now, before we get into that verb, there has to be an object. If a subject is doing an action, then there has to be an object that the action is being done unto. Are you following me? Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> it has to be an action, an object. So who is it? Who is the object of this? Let's read it again. But the God of all grace. So we know. We're talking about the God who possesses all grace. Grace does not come from any other source, but the God himself, the one and true God. There is no other God that has grace. Only the God who possesses all grace. Amen. Amen. That's important. That's a foundational truth for our belief in who we are in Christ Jesus. So who is the object of this? Us. Here it says it clearly. But the God of all grace hath called us. So he's doing an action toward us. And what is he doing? He's sending out an invitation. The God of all grace has called us unto his eternal glory so that we can see the glory of God. Praise God. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory has, uh, after that we have suffered, make us perfect. I said that God is the subject. And then the adjective old phrase is the God of all grace because the of grace modifies who the God we're speaking about. The verb is hath called. We are the object. He has called us. There is a preposition. You've heard Pastor Larry talk about this, the in him truths. 
by Christ, in Christ, with Christ, through Christ. Well, here it's the agency through Christ, God, the God of all grace. I know I'm belaboring the point, but before mm -hmm. this lesson is over, you're going to know that the God of all grace has called you and that he has called you to see the glory of God, just as he said to Mary and Martha, if you believe me, you will see the glory of God. That was one of the worst times in their lives. Their brother had been dead four days. And I don't know about how people are dead in the Middle East. I'm, I mean, the Mediterranean, I'm here in the Mediterranean, but I know if someone has been dead, I'm from San Francisco. If someone had been dead four days, it's a bad deal. Yeah. And Jesus stood before that tomb and he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear my prayers. You always answer me. So he had been praying and they were, Martha and Mary, like, if you had been there, this would have done, 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 blah, blah. And Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe that you will see the glory of God? And the scripture is so true for us because in Colossians, it says, Christ in us. The hope, of glory. the hope of glory and the word hope there is expectation so you can read it this way christ in me my right to see the glory of god i don't care what's in your life today if it's not glorifying god then you stay there until the glory of god till god is glorified until you see the glory of god in every situation in your life praise god my god amen praise, praise the Lord. god Praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what Christ in you is. And it means that you have the right to see God work in your life. Yeah. I don't care what you're going to. I don't care. I don't care. When I say I don't care, I'm not saying that I'm insensitive to you. But what I'm saying is it does not matter when it comes to the God of all grace. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Woo. Hallelujah. And you know, there's a dependent clause here. And we don't usually, Pastor Larry and I were talking about this. Uh, there's a certain sect of Christians, you know, if you talk about suffering, then they don't want to hear it. And if you're suffering, then they think you must have done something yeah. wrong and that God is against you. Well, I mean, why else are things going so bad in your life? Well, they apparently haven't read about all the stuff Paul went through. <laughs> yeah. And he wrote two thirds of the Bible, the Bible that we say we believe in. And this man went through all kinds of beatings. He went through all kinds of jail time. He was shipwrecked. He was starved. He was stripped of everything. He was under house arrest. Oh, my God. We didn't even get there. Oh, my goodness, Lord. My point is this. The word says after you have suffered a while, this is and a dependent clause. And this indicates that a, a condition must be done or performed before another action can be performed. Mm -hmm. Let me read this uh, the scripture again. But the God of all grace. I'm telling you, you're going to go to uh, go to bed tonight. You're going to dream about the God of all grace. Oh. But the God of all grace who hath called us to see his glory at work in our lives. We are as Jesus is. We can say this, God, I thank you that you always answer my prayer. God, I thank you right now, wherever you are, lift your hands and tell God, I thank you that you're always answering my prayer. You always, always, always because you're the God of all grace. And so it says, that certain things may have to be, take place before something else is done. Now, this is interesting because I want you to go to the sixth verse, and I'm just going to highlight them, not going to read them, but there's some steps that you have to take in order for, but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory, after that you have suffered a while, make you, something has to happen before he makes you perfect establish you, strengthen you, settle you. 
And these were very important. Verse six, we are to humble ourselves before God. You have to humble yourself and say, God, I can't fix it. You know, a lot of times I'm a fixer person. You know, I, I try to fix my husband. I try to fix my children. I try to fix. I, I, I have to always stop back and say, wait a second. I'm not the Holy Ghost. I never thought I was, but sometimes I just want to fix everything. <laughs> Oh, so I'm the only one in the world out of 8 billion people that want to do this. Excuse me. <laughs> and it says, but humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. There's a dependent clause. You humble, you get exalted. Verse 7, it says, cast all of them. So you know what? Just today. Just, I'm going to tell you, I'm preaching to myself. Just today, I had to just, well, yes, I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have to tell you, today, I was just so much different. Things are so many movable parts, and I'm trying to make things work. And, oh, my God. And I got a little frustrated. And Pastor had to be the husband. He calls me into his office. He tells me to sit on his lap. I sit on his lap and I, you know, tried to be, I was tempted to suck my thumb, which I've never done, but I was very tempted. And he prayed for me and he said, we got to cast all our care. And that's what I did. You know, sometimes it's an everyday, it's like brushing your teeth. So you brushed your teeth last night. You still got to brush, brush your teeth in the morning. So you brushed your teeth this morning. Before you go to bed, you better brush your teeth again. Sometimes we have to say, I, it, I, it's not my care. It's not walk down the street. It's not my care. Oh, my God. She's talking to herself. Yes, I am, because it's not my care. I've cast it over onto God. Verse 8 says we are to be sober. That means to be well-balanced and self-disciplined. We are to be alert circumspect, have eyes all around, aware of our uh, situation. Amen. We are walking in the spirit. We have the God of all grace, Jesus Christ in us. And finally, it says, we must remain firm in our faith and resist the devil and his imps. You know, a lot of times we're trying to resist the devil without being submitted to God. We're trying to resist the devil without casting all of our cares over on him. We're trying to resist the devil with us not being balanced in our own lives. We're trying to resist the devil and we're not holding fast to the Amen. in God. You know, faith means having confidence in the veracity of God's word. Amen. That's what Abraham did. He says, all this stuff is a mess, but God said, the God Amen. of all grace. And so why, why is that? Uh, what is it that the God of all grace, after you have suffered a while, and we've all been there, all, trust me, uh, we all are going through something, but he says, after you have suffered a while, after this action has been done, something else is going to be done without question. And that is the last part of that uh, verse is in the imperative mode. It means it will be done without fail. Let's look at that. Wow. This is enough to start shouting and running around the table in your home or if you're in your car, beep, 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 beep. I'm telling you, this is exciting. Amen. The God of all grace who has it called is. us unto his eternal glory after you have suffered, after you've gone through some crazy things, after you've been detained at the immigration office, after you've done this, after you're dealing with whatever it is, he, God, will make you perfect. He will uh, establish you. He will strengthen you and he will settle you. Listen to this. I made some notes. Here it is. He says, if the if you just don't worry about it, I will do this because I'm the God of all grace. 
And I want you to see my glory in your life. And I tell you this, you are going to see the glory of God through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. I am getting so excited. (laughs) Amen. Praise God, Loretta. Amen, Loretta. Hallelujah. He makes you perfect. You know what that word is? He will mend everything that's broken in your life. Yes, he will. Whatever it is. Come on, you're helpless. My God. The God of all grace. I don't care how what you're going through, at some point, he's going to mend everything that's broken in your life. Praise God. No question. No question about it. No question. It's 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 a done deal. The God of all grace, he will establish, establish you. In other words, he will give your life such a strong foundation. It won't be a broken life. You won't walk around feeling broken, downhearted, because the God of all grace. Is this good? This is very good. Hallelujah. This is very good. Praise God. The God of all grace has called us to see his glory in our lives. He will strengthen us. You know what? He'll make us. I don't care. You know, sometimes you get beat down. It was like the the apostles in Acts, Peter and John, you know, they were preaching and then they, uh, they were arrested and they were mistreated and what have you. It's an interesting thing because after they were let out of jail, they went to their brothers, the church and the Christian brothers church. And the thing that was prayed over them was God grant them the boldness. Wait a second. These were bold people. That's why they were ended up in jail, but something happened that perhaps broke their spirit where you, they felt like they were uh, like this. Uh, every time I turn around, someone has got their crossfires or crosshairs on me. And the prayer that was prayed over them was God grant them the boldness to speak forth your word by making signs and wonders, creating an atmosphere of signs and wonders. And later it says, and great grace was upon them. Praise Praise the Lord. Well, I'm blessing myself. I tell you that much. And then it says he will settle us. In other words, if your life is, you know, a lot of times when we're going through things, our lives is uh, our lives are fragmented. And God, you know, and I, the pastor will allow me to say this. I right now, my life is fragmented. Half my belongings are in the United States in storage and stuff is here. But you know what he says, after you've done whatever it is, without fail, I'll consolidate everything. I'll make sure you're more effective than you've ever been. I'll make sure that when you speak, when you do things, you will have such coherency. My Lord and my God. You know how it is. When you're going through things, sometimes you just can't think. That's what happened to me today. It just piled up on me. And I was there. Thank God for my husband. And he saw that. And we just stopped and we prayed. And then all of a sudden, I was just, praise God. We all need help. So you say, well, praise God for the God of all grace. The God of all grace. Yes. Well, we know which God we're talking about. We're talking about the God of all grace. So all the other gods, little G's, are dismissed. But let's talk about his character. We know he's the God of all grace. We know what he possesses. Now, just stay with me, and I'm going to have to get through this. Who is this God of all grace? Psalms 24, 7 through 10 reads, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory and the God of all grace 
shall come in. Who is this King of glory? glory? Who is this God of all grace? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye even lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the God of all grace, whatever it is in your life, the God of all grace. Ah, woo, I'm getting... Church of God and Christ on you right now. The God of all grace. Hallelujah. Every time, sometimes I'll say Shondi and Terry starts laughing. <laughs> She's been there. Love you, you know Pastor. <laughs> Praise God. And the God of all grace, the King of glory. That's who he is. The King of glory. Who is this king of glory. Who is this God who possesses all grace? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the king of glory. I, the God of all grace has called, whoo, the God of all grace has called you unto his eternal glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have to tell you something. That word, I won't, for a time, I want to get to some other things, but I want you to understand that when it says lift up your head, that's symbolic. You lift up, you open up your heart. And it says, oh, ye gates, that's a place of entrance for you. Get it where the king of glory, when you, you know, you say, well, I'm a Christian and God is, so God is in my life. Yes, but is he in every area of your life? Is he in every situation in your life? Amen. Well, that went over like a ton of bricks. (laughs) Think about it. Yes. We have the Lord in our life, but then we're trying, as I said, I'm a fixer upper and we're trying to fix stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. Now I have to go over here and fix my husband. Well, I'm just talking about myself. He doesn't need fixing. Great (laughs) word. Come on. (laughs) A little tweaking. (laughs) Well, praise God. But yes, the fact is, I'm trying to fix something that shows that I'm the one that needs fixing. I need to let the God of all grace get in that situation, whether it's in the immigration, whether it's in this or whether it's in the healing or in finances. The God of all grace, you called me unto eternal glory. You called me to see the glory of God. Whew. Well, one word here says, he will come in. And that phrase is interesting. It means to enter, which you figured. But it also means when he comes in, he comes in attacking the enemy. Woo. Uh, uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heads, old he gates. Be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. Wide yourself, and the God of all grace will come in, and He will come in. He won't be like, What's happening? Well, no, He'll come in and He will t- attack anything that is causing you disease. My Woo! God, Woo-hoo! <laughs> yes, glory to God, praise God, amen. Praise amen. God. He'll and he'll come in and you rem- remember, uh, Reverend Tim said it without fail. He will establish you, perfect you, settle you, strengthen you, and then he's. This is interesting. He will attain. He will attain. He will make certain that everything is the way he wants in your life. What Christ died for you, and this word here is enumerate. Wait, I think, I think this is going to just knock the socks off your feet. And if you don't have some, well, wait two seconds so you can go get some and put them on. Because I tell you, this is going to knock the socks right off your feet. Woo-hoo, you got socks on, Pastor? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <I'm a person>. <laughs> <laughs> he says, why put them on? They're going to get knocked off. <laughs> Here it is. This, you know, there's a difference between enumerating and counting. Counting is a, a, a science of 
gaining a total. There's one, two, three, four. There's four pieces of chocolate. Woo. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Got to keep my mind on the Lord. Hallelujah. But it says enumerate is something else. It's not just counting. The king of glory will come into your life and he will make a separate detail of anything and everything that's in your life. He will make a detail account and he will notice any things that you don't even know that's in your life. He will make a, a, a certain of it. He'll mention it. He'll speak to it. He'll take care of it. He'll change it. That's what enumerating is. Is that exciting? Oh, beautiful. Thank Ooh. you, Lord. And, and, and enumerating means that he will, I got to, I got to move on here. In other words, let's just look at the benefits of enumerating. But the God of all grace, who has called you unto his eternal glory by through the agency of Jesus Christ, after whatever disappointments, displeasure, you know, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. God is aware of it. He understands and he says, you know, in a little while, I'm going to mend. I know I'm speaking to some today. He's going to mend that broken heart. When I was a young child, my mother would take me to the AA Allen meetings. And one of the things that he would say, that he would sing in the spirit, he would say, and God is the mender of broken hearts. Who can bear a broken heart? God is the mender, the God of all grace. Praise the Lord. Praise God. When we trust, he takes account of everything that's in all our lives. That's enumerating. He pay, God, when he enumerates in your life, the God of all grace, he pays close attention to every detail in your life, even things you aren't aware of. He does, when he enumerates, he's not just a passive act of, of this happened, that happened, this happened. He gets involved. Thank yes. you, Father. Hmm. He gets involved in your life. You know, there was this commercial that went for a couple of years back, and it was saying about, I forget what they were advertising, but um, they had it where a dentist would come, a person would be in the dentist chair. You may have remember seeing it. And the dentist would look at the, uh, inside the person's mouth and his assistant would look in there and they go, yep, that's a cavity. Oh my goodness, that's a big cavity. That must hurt. Well, okay, time to go to lunch. See, <laughs> the fact is, you know what? You don't need someone just to tell you you're hurting. You need someone who says, okay, I noticed the pain, but I'm going to do something about it. Amen. Praise God. That's the God of all grace. That's the God of all grace. You know, it says, uh, I put the scripture down. He knows the plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. He is not living. And you know what? This is really good. God's not even when God is enumerating in your life, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And he enumerates. He's not just enumerating what's happening. He does what, what happened in the past and what's going to happen in the future. He's a God who was, is, and is to come. He is forever. He's never going to change. He's got your life covered. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Whew. Well, someone says, oh, you know, I think that uh, Psalms 24 is really referring to Christ. You know what? That is so astute of you. You, whew, nothing gets by you. Well, you're right. But I'll tell you why. Because in Colossians 1.19, it says, for it pleased the Father 
that in Jesus Christ should all the fullness dwell. In Colossians 2, 9 and through 10, it says, for in him Christ dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. And I read, and I said it to you earlier, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory. You don't see that? There's always this about Christ being in us, the riches of his glory, of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the fullness of the king of glory, the fullness of the God of all grace, the fullness of the Lord of hosts, all of whom God is. Have you noticed something that in the Old Testament, there's all of these different names of God. However, in the New Testament, it only refers to God as Theo. Why? Because the whole fullness of God is now in Christ. Wow, that's good. All of who he is, the Lord, the shepherd who will feed you, the protector, the healer, all of that is in Christ and Christ in you. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, uh, in one second, I'd like you to put my video up, but I'm going to read this first, and then I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to ask you to put the video up. And I think this video is going to really speak to Javier. <laughs> He'll know why in a minute. First, I mean, excuse me, not first, John. Oh, just for those who were putting up scriptures, my apology. Let me tell you what those scriptures were. I read was Colossians 1, 19, Colossians 2, 9 through 10, and Colossians 1, 27. And now John 1, 16, you know this portion. It reads, and of his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. However, Pastor put up that thing. See, I know Javier is going to love it. He's look at him. I think I can see him just smiling from ear to ear. But listen to this translation. I just read John 1 16. You'll see why. Look at that. Look at those waves. That's the Pacific Ocean. Um, Pastor Sharon and, and Terry, I, they must recognize it. You can see that. There it is. Wow, that's, I just love it. Look at that. That I should just move out of the way. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now I'm going to read off here. It reads in the bar case says, out of the words, Jesus is the word, out of the words, complete perfection, we have all received and to us, there has come wave upon wave upon wave of grace. Woo! There it is on the screen. You can read it right there. Hallelujah. Wait, look at that. Wave upon wave. That's grace. Running your life. Look at that. Get a picture. God gave Abraham a picture of the stars in the heaven, the sands on the shore. Well, I'm giving you a picture now, the wave of grace of his fullness. The bar cave reads out of the word because the scripture, John, starts out in the beginning was the word. One translation says at the beginning, the word already was. I love it. Descriptive. And it says, so we're talking about, and I love, the first time I ever heard this was through Pastor Larry. He said, Jesus was the word who became flesh so that we, the flesh, may become the word. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Amen. And so, Praise amen. And so it reads here, out of the word, Jesus, out of his complete perfection, we have all received, and to us there has come way upon way. I'm going to just go again. Way, this is it. I really need you to get a picture. See it. That's grace flooding your life. That's grace. It matters not what's going on. Grace upon grace. You know, I 
have so many other scriptures that I want to read, but I believe that uh, I'm just about finished. And Pastor, I need you to be ready, please, to help me minister. But I just want you to understand what this grace is all about. Grace for safety, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace, you are saved. The God of all grace. By grace, you are saved. The God of all grace. He saved means to be rescued from all that would harm. That means to be made complete, whole, safe. The God of all grace. Let's look at another one. It's for living a good life. Second Peter 1, 2 to, through 4, excuse me. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, our of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. My apology, according to his divine power, has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him he has called us. Did I not read that earlier in First Peter? And the God of all grace has called us. Did I not say that? Did I not read that to you more than once? The God of all grace, so that we can be partakers uh, that he has given us exceeding great and precious promises that we may be partakers of the divine nature. Look at this for prosperity. Second Corinthians 8, 9. We know the grace of our, the God of all grace. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet all for our sake, he became poor so that we through that poverty of his might be rich. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. Did you get that? I just read. Wow. And the God of all grace. And here it reads now. And yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace, whatever the grace is that you need in your life, you are saved by grace. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. And it's sufficient for all things. I love this. This is Paul. Paul, the one who was talking about us reigning in life. And he's the one that had to deal with so many different things. And it said in 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 9. Presence of God. Hallelujah. For this thing I besought, I pleaded. One translation reads or renders, I begged. I begged the Lord three times. Apparently he had been praying about it, but he got down while he was just excuse me, blowing bubbles through his nose. I know no one else does that but me, but oh well. You know, where you just get ugly when you're starting to cry, your face gets all torn up and, well, praise God. I'm just trying to give a picture here. (laughs) Keep it real. Keep it real, that's right. (laughs) Shundai. (laughs) Praise God. But he said, but th- and I know it's God speaking because, you know, in the King James, Jesus words are always in red. And so if you have the King James, he said, and God and he said, I prayed unto the Lord. And then he said in red, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And then he says, I most gladly glory in my infirmities and when I'm suffering, when things are going, because the power of God, the Lord of hosts, the king of glory is in this situation. But I have to tell you something. Many times when we say that, we think, okay, the God of all graces, the God says that my grace is sufficient. That means, okay, you know, I have grace. I can... God's grace, he's helped me. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh. You need to look at the word sufficient. It's a verb. And it says, my grace, God says, my grace, that grace, that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, goodwill, favor, benefits, recompense. Who, Who in this 
listening audience is waiting for God to recompense. Both hands up. Woo-hoo. <laughs> recompense. If, you, if I could, I'd throw my feet up too. Recompense. Woo-hoo. This is grace, rewards. And then it says, my grace is sufficient. The word sufficient is a verb. And it means my grace has the power, the un failing strength. My grace has the unfailing strength. My grace is strong, sufficient, and enough to defend you. My grace is enough to satisfy you and contend against the enemy. My grace is strong to bear, to raise a barrier, to ward off, to avail, to do what is ever needed. Woo-hoo, this extraordinary grace that's glory. Strong Wonderful for words, Pastor and the God, Pastor, come up, the, the God of all grace, the God of all grace, the God of all grace, lift up your heads and allow him in. Pastor? Praise God. That is, uh, that's amazing. The God of all grace, wave after wave, healing is a grace. Is your microphone on there, Pastor? May not be. Healing is a grace. There you go. Wealth is a grace. Favor is a grace. Wisdom is a grace. Authority is a grace. All kinds of grace, wave after wave. There's a wave of salvation coming upon the planet. Many revivals are breaking out in many places, and many people shall be swept into the sea of life. Yes. The wave of salvation is coming nation over nation. Yes. When the Spanish conquistadores went across Mesoamerica, they came upon this great ocean, and they named it the Pacific Ocean, which means peaceful. I don't know what day they arrived on. <laughs> I've been at the Pacific Ocean, and they've got some waves there. Javier knows about it. He's a surfer. Javier, I have a word from the Lord for you. There's a wave of prosperity about to come upon you in Anna. It's going to break over you. It's going to wash your problems away, wash your debts away, yes. and clear your life of financial burdens. Yes. A wave of prosperity is coming upon you, Javier and Anna. Praise God. You need to take that. Everybody, everybody, Facebook, YouTube, take a hold of that. More money means more ministry. If you don't want it for yourself, have plenty left over to give unto every good work. There's a wave of healing coming. I prophesy that signs, wonders, and miracles are coming to Z Church. We're going to be known as a place where people come to receive their healing. We release it now by faith. In Jesus' name, there is a healing grace that's coming upon you right now, and a grace of favor, and a grace of authority, and a grace of wisdom, all manner of grace, wave after wave after wave. My God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Salvation is a grace. There's been some bad teaching through the years that people need to earn their salvation and do works for their salvation. And, you know, it make it very difficult to get saved. No, the Bible says, whosoever will, uh, let him come to the Lord. God will in no wise cast out anyone who comes to him. Salvation is a grace. It's not something you do for God. It's something that God has done for you. Father, I pray that right now, people who are listening and watching who have not received Jesus will receive it. It's a grace. It's easy. All they have to do is say yes. Just say this little prayer. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I receive the grace of of salvation. Father, in Jesus' name, I receive the grace, grace of, of salvation. salvation. Praise God. Well, Pastor Loretta, you have blessed us. Thank you so much. I think uh, you and I will go back and listen to this oh, and watch it again and uh, glean from it. We're, we're going to have communion now. And uh, I believe that uh, Steve is going to minister communion. After that, Christine is going to 
help us with our tithes and offerings. And then we'll wind things up with a few announcements and uh, maybe prayer time. Uh, prayer time. Thank you for not letting me forget that. So, uh, Terry, if we have any, I'll go ahead and ask you this now. Terry, do we have any prayer requests today? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, why don't we go ahead and do that now before communion? Uh, no time like the present. So, uh, uh, Steve, hang on. We're going to have communion in just a moment. Give folks a chance to get their bread and wine together. Uh, Terry, what's our first prayer request? Uh, let's pray for Gail. Uh, she has a stomach flu. We want to pray for her. Our Gail. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll take care of that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Gail. Pastor Gail's a blessing. She's been in the ministry for years. She knows about healing. She expects to be healed. And we thank you that healing is a grace and a wave of healing is coming upon her right now, washing the stomach flu away in Jesus' name. I like that. This wave after wave. I like that. Praise God. I'm, I'm, work, that, I'm working that. That's working for me. Coming upon Maria, <laughs> That's great. too. Wave yeah. after wave. Amen. Amen. Uh, and then for Priscilla Kramer, please pray that my husband, Tim's cousin, Nicole, she's in ICU in Texas. Her kidneys are shutting down, and they are talking about dialysis. Her mother, Rose, lives with us in Minnesota. She's like a sister to Tim. We are all praying. We serve a God of miracles. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, tell me the name again. Nicole. Oh, Nicole. Nicole. All right. I, I'm going to pray again. I want I want to volunteer myself. Praise God. Uh, Amen. A friend of ours, and, and I think Pastor Sharon Remin, uh, knows Kent and Gail. Kent went to the doctor and he came back with his x-rays in his hands and they had black masses on his kidneys. And we prayed for him. He went back to the hospital the next day. And he requested more x-rays, no black masses. Now, our friend Art in San Jose oh, yes. was in the hospital dying. They said, there's nothing we could do for you. His spleen is shut down, his liver had shut down, and his kidneys had shut down. And they said, there's no way we can help you. And uh, they gave him just really hours to live. I showed up at the hospital, prayed for him. His sister showed up, picked him up after I prayed for him drove him about 20 minutes to Palo Alto to the Stanford Medical Center, requested more tests. And during that 20 minute drive, his kidneys started to function perfectly. Right. His liver functioned Glory perfectly. And his spleen functioned perfectly. And he's still blowing and going and riding his motorcycle and living yeah. big for the Lord today. Father, Thanks. I thank you for Nicole, for her family. We command this kidney to be 100% healed by the miracle grace of God yes. right Jesus. now in Jesus' name. Thank you. I, I believe you. I thank you for it. I count it done. Amen. 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 That's it for this time. All right. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to slip right over into communion. Get ready. Steve, go ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lorida. Thank you, Pastor Larry, uh, for, for your sermon, as well as praying for uh, people that are sending the request. Um, for today's communion, quickly go to 1 Corinthians. Well, I have the verse here, so you don't have to. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. It... Um, Gosh, uh, today's communion, communion, let's make it a, a quick, a time for self-examination and reflection. God of God is, God's grace is sufficient, and God is a God of grace. And, but there's not one thing, sometimes, there's not one thing that we could do so we can have a closer relationship with God. And closer relationship with God, as well as just getting to know him better. Yes. And we ask God to give us the strength and the wisdom to apply today. So as in, what is that one thing I can change in my life to be closer to God? And knowing that God of grace, so God of all grace is there for us. That one thing. So Luke uh, 22, uh, chapter, Luke chapter 22, verse 19 to 20. And he took the bread, and Jesus took the bread, 
and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake that. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's partake the drink. Thank you. Oh, the blood oh, of oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, the blood oh, of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for leading us in communion. And now, Christine, uh, help us with our tithes and offerings. Amen. The scripture God gave me today is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 and 11, that says, And the God who provides seed for the sower and bread to be eaten will also multiply your resources. Thus you will be enriched in all things so that you can be generous. That's God's desire for us is to be generous, to be able to have whatever we need so that we can give and give generously. And he will provide everything we need for that and then multiply what you do give. So go to zchurch.life and give generously today and watch God multiply that back to you. Amen. Very good. have just a few announcements before the afterglow begins. We invite you to visit our website, zchurch.life. You'll find the Z Church blog and all our past services there, and they'll encourage you. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll also find the Zoom links for our Zoe group meetings. If you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team, you can email info at zchurch.life. There are many opportunities available, and there's a place for you. We also encourage you to watch Pastor Larry's Your Good Life devotional clips on Facebook weekdays at 7 a.m. on the Z Church page. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is Bob. If you would like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. And if you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know and they'll bring your question into the discussion. We'd also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. And now it's time for the Afterglow. Bob? Well, hello and welcome to Afterglow. This is not where church ends. This is where church continues. We're just going into the next phase of church. 
But what is church? Well, according to the Apostle Paul, what the, the New Testament church service is, is what he wrote in 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. And I like the way it says it in, in the uh, Passion Translation. Let each one contribute what strengthens others. And that's what we're here to do now. In fact, according to uh, Paul there, church isn't over until every member of the body of Christ has added to the assembly and to the body everything they have that can strengthen each other. And so that's what we're here to do today. Um, whether whether you have a, a word of prophecy or whether you got some insight during the message that, that might help others or whether you want to share about what God's grace has done in your life as a testimony that will build others faith or 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 if you have questions um that that might help us further explore and, and answer other people's questions that's what afterglow is about this is where church continues and um so there is a function in zoom where you can click to raise your hand and if you can't find that we'll just raise your hand and and or just speak up and get our attention and javier <laughs> is the first to follow the instruction and raise his hand. Javier, tell us what you've got for us. <laughs> yeah, that makes me remember. I had this trick every time I was a student in any course. Uh, I always intervened first. I had something ready to say, oh, he intervened. <laughs> then I could be quiet the rest of the class because I have done, done with. <laughs> but I, I really have something. Uh, <laughs> There is always many people, when you try to preach them or testify them, they say, uh, but if there is God and there's a God of grace and he's so good, but why bad things happen? And even, as they say, bad things happen to good people. Uh, let's remember, this is a battle. We are in the middle of a battle. There is an enemy. Yes. Yes. There is an enemy out there. So that's the reason, because of that enemy, uh, that we have allowed the enemy to come in into our territory and yeah. give him give him some rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why all these bad things happen, and that's something we could tell people that that's not because of God lacking grace, and that's just what I wanted to say. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Javier. Yeah. Hallelujah. But when you when you consider man's sin and 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 fall, it's it's really God's grace that anything good ever happens on planet Earth at all is just God's divine favor towards us because we deserve to have been gone, wiped out, and erased from his memory when, when we did fall. But it's grace that even kept mankind alive and on this planet so that we could one day receive, as pastors taught us, wave after wave after wave of grace through Jesus forever. Um, Pastor Sharon. Oh, hi. I just wanted to thank Pastor Loretta for the message and that image of the ocean with the wave after wave of grace. I'm putting that up on my wall. That was really beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> that inspired me. Yeah, that blessed me too. I I, I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'll never look at the ocean the same again. <laughs> no, if I'd said it was uh, spiffy. That would have dated me. <laughs> I have to tell you, when I saw that um, translation of the bar K, and as Pastor said, it's not really one of our favorite um, translations, you know, but when I saw it there, it's just, it, it really gave me a revelation all of a sudden. And you know, that's Bible. It says when the enemy comes in, God like a flood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. Very good, Amen. Oh, like a flood. Do you hear me? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think uh, she's still in preaching mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm dying. <laughs> Javier, Javier um, what do you think about that prophecy you got? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I received it, certainly. And we were, that's a confirmation because we were waiting for it. 
uh, because we stand very firmly in that part that says you will give and borrow and you will not ask for borrowing because uh, we have so, so many debts. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, 80% or more of our available income is eaten up by debts, by interest and having to pay, etc. Well, we were not very wise. We should have followed the Holy Ghost instructions in the past and we made bad choices. But God is full of grace. He pardons pardon, us and he, the Holy Ghost comes and fix the problems mm -hmm. or because you screw it up and we are taking it <laughs> definitely. Uh, uh, we are waiting for instructions. It's like when Moses was uh, in front of the Red Sea, uh, he was waiting for instructions. Okay, what do I do? Okay, get, get that uh, shaft and put it in the water. And we are, need, we are waiting for instructions because we have alternatives. We want, now we want to be wiser and really follow the Holy Ghost on the instructions of what we have to do. But we receive it. Uh, it's a confirmation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, Javier, when I went to Peru as a teenager more than 50 years ago, um, there were big waves hitting the coast of Peru all the time. Big waves, big waves, big waves. I've been in the surf wave after wave after wave. So um, it's more than 50 years later. Are there waves still coming in Peru or have they run out of waves? No way. <laughs> we yeah. got... We got two spots where, I don't know, perhaps there are secret spots out there waiting for, to be discovered. Uh, one which is very close to the city is actually about a 30 minute drive or 35 minute drive away. And they got like 25 footers. And there's another place further south, perhaps you, you know about that place south, uh, where the waves are uh, even bigger. I don't know, 30 or something like that. And they're more dangerous. They're closer to the shore and there are some rocks there. And that's another very, uh, a place where they have very big waves. And they also have the place that normally in, uh, has the, uh, in average, every day, normal day, they have the biggest wave, which is called Punta Rocas. I was very, very fan of that beach. And uh, normally they're between, I don't know, uh, eight and 15 or, or steep waves. So there are waves and they're consistent. They're there. They keep on coming. Uh, I have coming. one video that I wanted to send you uh, because here near my home, there's a place where the waves are not very deep, but they're pretty nice, pretty nice, especially because they're very close to my home. I just can't a job to the place in 15 minutes and it's very very nice there are still waves wave after wave after wave oh, after wave i just want to say this because i know i would love to hear from the others uh, but uh, what you just said was we're gonna that, have to talk uh, into the mic what you just what you just said about 50 years ago there were waves splashing and those waves are still splashing yes and that's yes. grace did you get that yes. that yes. grace it's, it's grace upon grace, wave upon wave. 50 years ago, waves, and it's still, there's nothing has stopped those waves. Yes. That's that's what Pastor is wanting to convey. It's there. And yeah. as he said with the Pacific Ocean, you know, I don't know why they called it the calm ocean. <laughs> because I've been, I don't know if you know, the. there's a place called Fort Point. Is now It was an army base at one time. And what have you, and you go under the Golden Gate Bridge and you can park your car kind of right there on the, the pier. And you have to be careful and park your car uh, toward the, the rocks or the, the hill. Because if you get too close to the edge, these waves are so high, they'll splash up and they'll cover your entire car. And, you know, that's salt. So you don't want that on your car. But I mean, these waves yeah. come up. And they're maybe like 10 feet high. They just splash up. And that's... There's a, there's a, um, a nautical term that sailors use. It's called the doldrums. The doldrums. And the doldrums okay. is an atmospheric situation where there's no wind. 
There's a 16-year-old Australian girl that sailed around the world solo, and she spent about three weeks in the doldrums. When there wasn't any wind, her, her sail is just hanging in there limp. Uh, and of course, in a sailing ship, you depend on sail. But you know what? The wind came again, and the waves came again. Yeah. And I thought about that, that some people are kind of in the doldrums, but the waves will come again. Wow, yeah. praise God. Yeah. And you may have been in this uh, temporary situation where it didn't seem like, you know, there were many things moving, but it's going to start moving again. Yes. And that, I, I believe that's yeah. a word for the Lord for someone, maybe someone on our team right here I'm that we're talking to. That. I'm taking that word right now. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Praise God. I receive it. Amen. What a good message, right. Pastor Loretta. Thank Pastor you. Loretta, you have earned your supper. I'm going to take you out for Chinese. <laughs> okay. Aw. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> I'm wearing it. I'm going to the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> I should I should get a bandage here. <laughs> That Joseph's son, that was just right there. You know, what a, a great God, an awesome God. <laughs> Thank you, Elder Bob, for doing this. Yep. All, All right. Bless you, pastors. We Pastor, we're, we're getting some more prayer requests, if you would have a moment oh, yeah, uh, right now. Maria posted that um, one of my Facebook friends just asked me to pray for his broken heart because a very close, trusted person betrayal. The wounds of a friend are grievous. Well, they ask you to pray, so go ahead, Terry. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this person. We lift them up to you. And we thank you that you're the God of all comfort, Lord. We ask you to comfort this person's heart, strengthen them. We speak grace to them and peace to their hearts in the name of Jesus. Build them up in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' yeah. mighty name. Yeah. And another one, uh, Tim posted this. It's from Ann Wheeler. And she says, uh, could you pray for a sweet 10-year-old girl in my life with pneumonia? Her younger sister has flu. A few other friends have cancer. And this is for friends of Ann Wheeler. Okay. These are from Rescreen. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Good. You know, um, I I'm so thankful that Z Church is touching people. Amen. We would love it if we if we had 50,000 members. But every person who's touched or blessed is important. And uh, Elder Bob, why don't you pray for their family? Okay. I don't remember if we had a name for this 10-year-old, but... Um... No, it's just uh, okay. Ann Wheeler put the request in. All right. All right. Well, we, we know Ann's 10-year-old... Friend and Father, we just we just pray mercy. And again, yes, we pray grace, grace, grace come there. And we just pray that the hearts in that family even be open to and yield to being flooded over with, with your grace as grace brings healing and health and strengthening, not just healing the condition at this time, but strengthening for the future that, that health remain and and illness not return in Jesus' name. So be it. Amen. And, and Anne is also also, also ahead, for Tim. her younger sister has the flu, and she Anne says that she's friends with you, Bob. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I know she. Go said ahead. Sorry, also. Terry. <laughs> That's okay. <Yeah. laughs> I'm just reading what you posted there. <laughs> Go okay. ahead, Bob. Oh, well, well, we just extend it <laughs> to the sibling, too. I, I meant to include the whole family. We're, we're believing for, for that grace of healing to come into that family and house. Yes. Amen. Amen. The yes. name of the girl is Sarah. Yeah. S-E-R-R-A. Sarah. Okay. Do you want to read that one, uh, Maria of Saeed Cam Camilli? Um. It's saying all the Muslims and Christians people in every, um, I'm guessing it says part of the world, to pray God saving the earth of the terrible disasters 
and protect the countries of the earthquakes, which destroy. Oh, I'm. I lost the. I lost what I was reading. Sorry about that. I which don't know why destroy the, many regions in Syria and Turkey, and we have to be united in order to face the climate changes because we're belonging to the same father, Aiden, and we don't have to kill each other and demolish the lands to have personal Amen. purposes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Is that Maria's since she started reading it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. the, I, I, just, I just saw it on our restream. His name is Said. Said. I would say Said. Okay. Said Camille. Terry's our prayer leader. I'll, I'll let her direct it or, or direct who should pray over it. <laughs> uh, Maria, so would you like to go ahead? Absolutely. Pray. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, that again, you are the God of all grace. Yes. And Lord, we thank you that you have never run out of grace. And our planet and the turmoil that is um, right now in the consequences of, of, of death and, and evil and, and sin would not be too much for you. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, that you are an expert of turning chaos into beauty, into yes. order. And you do glorify yourself on the worst. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the revival that you are bring into the whole earth. And I thank you that with that revival, there is your light and there is your grace and there is your power floating the whole earth, Lord, and showing your love. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that is not floating just Syria, not yeah. floating just, just the Middle East, but it's floating the whole earth, Lord God. And I thank you that you are showing your real heart in the midst of this. This is not your kingdom yet, but your church is here bringing your kingdom. Yes. And your will will be done yes. here on earth as it is in heaven, in the midst of everything, just as our pastor said and teach. Yes. Lord, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of sin. Your grace will overabound. Yes. And your light will yeah. disperse the darkness. Yes. And we thank you, Lord God, because there's no prerequisite, like our pastor Sharon said. There's no prerequisite, Lord God. We thank you that your blood is still being presented for the whole humanity. Praise God. Your Amen. intercession is still before you, Father. Jesus' intercession is still before you. And the Holy Spirit through the earth, in the earth, is calling on, opening our mouths, filling our mouths with that intercession of power, Lord God. And you are manifesting the fruits of it through the whole earth, Lord God. Amen. Just by your infinite love and mercy and grace and favor. And we thank you for that, Lord, because it is gathering that harvest of the end times yeah. everywhere. We believe yeah. it, Lord. We yes. declare it so. Praise and we God. thank you, Lord, for the myriads of <clears throat> angels floating the earth, following your instructions and your commands for your glory, Lord God. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So be it. Okay. Okay, let me look at our notes and catch up and see how we're doing. I don't see any other hands raised yet. Waiting to see who will be bold next. I know there's a lot of other Z team members that that have plenty of insight and can share more. <laughs> I sure did appreciate that 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 video too of wave after wave, realizing that God's grace is infinite. It's never going to run out. And 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 even if we blow it this time, we'll, we'll catch the next wave. Get get out your surfboard like Javier. There's another <laughs> wave coming. Be ready for it. And and that's and that thing too of of uh, 
you know, my grace is enough for you. We've always took it that that means, yeah, just suffer under the circumstances, but God will kind of kind of give me grace to, I don't know, I guess not hang myself, you know, or whatever. But no, it's that God's grace is sending another wave that's bigger than your problem. So get ready to mount up on that thing and overcome the problem. Yeah, there's enough grace out there. <laughs> Anne has another uh, prayer request. I wonder if you could uh, do that, Terry. It's in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have another. Uh, I'm asking and believing for healing of, I'm not sure what that is, oscillates to be extricated uh, so out of my to be extricated out of my body to be given the knowledge of wisdom of what foods to be to put in my body and what not to put in is that the one you meant yeah. okay i'm not sure how to pronounce yeah. that word sorry oscillates i believe or oscillates i believe okay yeah. <laughs> go go ahead <laughs> lift her up go ahead well okay lord in your name in your Thank identity you. and in your authority we speak to the oscillates that that have plagued Anne's body to to cause pain Jesus. and we command in the authority of Jesus you must go out from Anne and yeah. and be purged and and Anne's body be renewed yes be Jesus. renewed in youth as we've been taught the whole body renews every 7 to 11 years anyway it might as well renew according to you and the healing that's in you and and recover and recover and recover Amen. And we pray that you do give supernatural wisdom, illumination, understanding of, of anything in the natural that Anne can be doing to, to alter diet or nutrition or, or receive the right advice to see, to see how to stop this from occurring. In Jesus' name, so be it. Amen. 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 Okay. Her youth will be renewed like the eagles as she waits on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wow, this just keeps okay. going. Jenna Aish, uh, another friend says, I need prayers for sending stuff back to its sender. <laughs> Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, that okay. you are the Lord of hosts. Yes. I thank you that you are our refuge and our defense. Yes. That you are our king that you are our lawgiver, you are our judge. And Lord, this is not only on the spiritual, also in the physical realm, and not only on the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realm. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, that your grace is sufficient and more than enough, and is defeating the enemy, and is defeating our enemies. And you have said that our enemies are your enemies, Lord. That's right. And we yeah. say your enemies are our enemies, Lord. And we thank you that we are in this together by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus' sacrifice. And we thank you, Lord, that you always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Oh, and we thank you that in all these things, including principalities and, and powers and darkness, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So we declare, Lord God, not just our freedom, not just our victory, but the grace is flooding, turning enemies into friends, turning enemies into supporters, mm -hmm. turning enemies into protectors. You did it with Paul, Lord God. Yeah. And your church had great <laughs> peace. And got one of the greatest yeah. apostles of time out of one of his greatest, greater enemies, Lord God. Do it again, Lord God. Yeah. Yes. Do it yeah. again. We call so for our enemies to salvation in Jesus' name. Yes. We declare repentance yeah. in Jesus' name. We declare mm -hmm. the fruit of repentance, Lord. And we declare them for salvation, for peace for brotherhood, Lord, in Jesus' name, just as you yes. want it to be. I thank you that you shed yes. your blood for them. Jesus. We take all those spirits that have been deceiving them and using them off of them. We Amen. sever those in Jesus' name. Yes. And we call yeah. them right <laughs> now instruments and tools of your kingdom, of yeah. your salvation, of your deliverance, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, because I know 
you love to do these things. Yes. We are expectant right now, Lord God. Glorify Amen. yourself greater than ever before, yes. Lord God, in yes. Jesus' name. I thank you that you turn the tables to the enemy and you bring his traps to fall into his own head. And I thank you that what he used, the people that he used now, it turns against him, Lord God, in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And if you all are listening, please uh, let us know the good reports that you receive at info at zchurch.life. And um, I'm writing these down so that we can cover you in prayer on Wednesdays. We have Wednesday prayer and we have a wonderful prayer team. And so, wow, we didn't mean to turn this into a prayer meeting, but however the Holy Spirit leads. And so, yes, we would love to hear from you. Praise God. Amen. Beautiful. It's the way church is supposed to be done. (laughs) <laughs> love it yeah well bob if i could i would just like to give everybody a little incentive yeah to understand the peace that passes all understanding yeah my dad in the natural died a few days ago but i am so happy for him because he is now with jesus and it is the happiest he's ever been and I am so happy for him. Amen. And I am not sad in one bit. I just praise God for him. Amen. Praise God. It works. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and praise God for such a testimony. Yes. Yeah. As you see, the enemy doesn't like that. He <laughs> wants to mess with my video. <laughs> Okay. But he does give you the peace if you are in his presence. Yeah. And if you are in the word, I'm telling you, you you really have no clue what it's about until you do it. Yeah. And then once you do it, you're like, why did I not do this before? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. See everything from heaven's perspective. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for giving Tim such a heritage and a and a Christian family and background and hope and in seeing his father again. And I and I just I just honor Tim's dad for that. And and we praise you for your work in that family and and for and for through that family giving us our brother Tim. We praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Yeah. My God. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, Terry, if you could add that Scott and Denny with cancer to your list of prayers. Okay, okay we sure will. That was also from Ann Wheeler. They just keep okay. coming And she in. says thank you to everybody. Okay. Oh, you're so welcome. So welcome. Father, right now, we just lift up Scott and Denny to you in the name of Jesus. Cancer, go, bow in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. We declare your grace over them, wave after wave after wave in every part of their body in the name of Jesus. And we thank you by Jesus' stripes, they are healed. We thank you, Lord. There is no distance in cyberspace, praise God. It's just as if Jesus himself has come and laid hands on you, and you are healed. Praise God. Amen. Amen. hate cancer. I hate cancer. And we would love to see you on Zoom. That would just be wonderful. Amen. I'd have to teach her how to push some buttons. (laughs) We'll see. Well, there you go. When you when out. you have something to do, give it to a busy man. Yeah. As Pastor <laughs> says. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> well, anybody we haven't talked to today who who's bold enough to turn their camera on or say hello or anything we left undone. I'm always up? bold enough, Bob. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I should have scrolled down far enough to see your name. Yes. We can pick up Christine anytime. I'm just (laughs) kicking back, relaxing, listening to everybody else talk today. And it has been good to have so many prayer requests. That's been really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking of you with that one about about return to sender and that and that prophetic word we got during 
during the pre-service prayer. Yeah. 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 Whatever they send, get. send your way. <laughs> yep. Send it back. <laughs> Same way you talk to a dog, talk to the devil. Get. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but what I wanted to uh, mention, a scripture came up in my spirit when she was talking today, and I can't remember where it is. And I left my phone on the other side of the room, oh. so I couldn't Google it. <laughs> but I remember... Um, so many times when I was going through persecution in the past, it's like God's grace is there for you, but he gave me a scripture to stand on that said on their part are threatenings, but on your part will rest my glory. And I was thinking about that this week is like when we need to go out and be bold for Christ in the face of everything that's going on in the earth today, we need to get so that we not only don't mind the persecution, but we get tickled with joy of the Lord when it comes, because that's when the glory of God will just rest on you. And it's a different type and flavor of glory that you won't get any other way. There are different um, taste of glory, in my opinion, when you're worshiping God and the glory is there. And when you're, you know, moving in the spirit, ministering to people, there's a glory, but there's a different glory that comes on you when you're standing in the face of persecution. And I know that personally, and it's just a very powerful, clean, piercing, like fiery glory that's there for you. And it's like, there were times after I was out of all those situations that I would sit and say to God, why do I feel like I'm bored? I mean, I'm not, I'm not battling all these demonic spirits and I'm not, you know, seeing all the angels come to protect me and stuff. And, and, and you miss that sense of that glory that was there on you when you were being persecuted. It's like, Hey, there's plenty of it out there. Just get out in the streets. You'll find some more. So that's, that's um, yeah, there's different ways and places and times for God to grace you and bring his anointing on you powerfully. And if it's my opinion, you're not being persecuted, you're not doing enough for Jesus because Satan will persecute you. So yeah, get out there. Praise God, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's that's my thing saying for the last years. Just get out there in the playground. Get out there in the playground. Okay. It's out there. Actually, the Lord has been having me minister on that, just suffering for him for sacrifice, just for doing good. Right. And it's not even that you're suffering. You got to get out of that mentality. It's like, oh, good. I get to get some glory today. <laughs> I was yeah. like, Amen. look forward to the battle. Look forward to, I mean, whatever words are coming out of their mouth are nonsense and ridiculous demonic spirits anyway. So I was like, don't worry about what they're saying or even what they're trying to do. You just stand in the glory and enjoy yourself. It is actually exciting. Yes, no suffering needed. Just go out and enjoy it. I love that. Rejoicing, amen. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that insight. That, yeah, there's there's a glory that comes on when when we stand against and stand in persecution and and don't waver and 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 the devil he he's a bully. He wants to intimidate and get us to back down. And he's got so many Christians afraid of persecution. Oh no, persecution might come. We should be saying, "Hey, come on! I'll miss out on the glory." Persecute me. Exactly. Try it. Give me your yes. best. <laughs> yeah, there are days when you know I get bored for the persecution. Come on, yeah. let's go. Let's yeah. go. Go poke That's a demon. A... Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's well worth it to go out in the holy boldness of God and have fun with it. Don't let it scare you. It's the people who are frightened that the devil can get through with attack. If you're standing in the glory and the joy of the Lord is filling you, nothing they do is going to hurt you at all. It's just going to bounce right back at them. Don't, don't be intimidated by Satan's threats. I, I'm reminded of something Gloria Copeland once said, said, and that is that that if the devil was all that he he cracks himself up to be, he wouldn't have to lie about it. Right. <laughs> so, true. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's arm right. yourself with joy and go on out there. Amen. Amen. 
Remember yeah, in the middle of, of persecution, uh, Paul and Silas at midnight, they sang praises yeah. to God and everyone heard them. And how many people got saved because of that? Wow. Yeah. Wow. The yeah. whole, all of them heard them. Yeah. 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 Praise yeah. God. Yes. God doesn't yeah. like us to be gutless wonders. <laughs> He's <laughs> looking for people who are not afraid and he expects us to not be lukewarm. And in my opinion, if you can only have church at church and only have church at home wow. and you're not having church when you're out there around the people you're working with, then you are pretty lukewarm. So yeah. turn the yeah. fire up. Go on yeah. out there boiling. That's good. Hey, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and Terry you actually- Ann also needs uh, housing. And she yeah. has a list of prayers. I told her to send it to the email. <laughs> okay. All right. We will definitely be praying and... for that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ann. And thank you, prayer team. Everyone, be aware. Yes, You're all of you. Prayed over. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> we Amen. don't appreciate our prayer team near enough because we don't see them and we don't necessarily all join them, but they are out there and being God's instruments to speak words of prayer and words of faith into his body in the earth. And we Thank God for that. And we also thank the prayers. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Praise Amen. the Lord. I'll tell you, it's a, it's a wonderful thing when you can pray and see people's prayers answered and you can prepare the way for, for what's to come. And sometimes in prayer, you just, you know that I, I already prayed that out. Once you walk it out, it's like, I prayed about that the other day, you know, and now I'm walking it out. I just know there's going to be just a, a spirit of expectancy of something going to change, something's happening, you know, and then you see it. So right. I, and, and I love that about Z church. I love that about our prayer team. And that's just wonderful. It, we all bring something to the table. Don't think you don't, because you've got something, you got Jesus, yeah. you got something. <laughs> yeah. You must be expecting. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have something in my heart. If yes, we please. can do before we wrap or wrap it. Yes. Um we we are connected as a body and we are being recharging like like at least once a week you need to go and, and put gas on your car. And that's the way that you do it, and you use that vehicle for everything that you need to do. And we're coming at least weekly here. To receive from the spirit, receive his anointing, receive his flame, because we're going places. That's right. And and you might not be even aware of how much the Lord is actually using you. And how many people have their eyes on you and not just because of you. Jesus. And you, you yeah. might not even be aware of how many of those that you are connected with, even slightly are actually being touched by the Lord through you. Amen. So how about if we pray for all those that are around us? Because we have been already sent. We have been already sent. We are placed strategically. And the Lord, it is, he is using us. We cannot help but be lambs. The light of the Lord is in us. That light is being shining. And how about if we pray for all those that are seeing that light around us? Before we say goodbye, we're heading to that week. And and how about if we get a few testimonies of what the Lord has been doing around us without us even being aware of? Amen. Amen. Yeah, it it sounds like a good way to, to wrap it up. Amen. Well, and I, I think you sound like a good one to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I still strongly agree. I've I've been seeing this more and more in my, my personal life. It's like, wait a minute. You know, I, I used to be the guy in the back of the room who tried not to be noticed. And finally, I started to realize, oh, wait, people are noticing. And they're noticing in a positive way. And and well, yeah, we, we can we can point to God through this. We can we can point Absolutely. to him. Yeah. And uh, people are noticing us every day, one way or another. So let's let's use it for his glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. so then you agree then to, to wrap it up or, or there is something after? Unless there's someone else that has something else that you'd like to add now. It's about the time that we usually wrap things up. So 
since I don't see any, any other hands raised, um, then, then I think uh, uh, Maria has a, a very good point and, and a very good thing for us to pray and believe that it's going to go on all of us all through the week. And yes. we're going to keep coming back with more and more good reports. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Father, Maria. in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the faith that pleases you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for your anointing and your flame, Lord, to be bright with your glory. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that we are your temples and you are glorifying yourself over us, Lord. And Lord, we pray over everyone that you're reaching out, that you're reaching to through us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. I thank you for those that we haven't even noticed that they are noticing you in our lives. I thank yeah. you for those that maybe we are despising the kind of relationship we have with them. And we don't even know how much you are touching them, Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every need and every battle that is happening around us, Lord God. Because we release you to glorify yourself over yes. it, Lord. Yes. Yes. I thank yes. you, Lord God, that we are in your hands. But I thank you, Lord God, that you are overflowing through us, Lord God. And you're going above and beyond ourselves. Yes, thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that we are instruments and tools and weapons of revival. I thank you that with the salvation and the deliverance and the comfort and the healing that you're giving to us, you're also reaching out others, Lord God. Yes. I thank you, Lord God, for the victory. I thank you for the rippling of your yes. glory and your grace and your favor. Thank you for blessing us to be a blessing. And yes. thank you, Lord God, for just being glorious over our life. We're counting on this, Lord God, through yes. the week for the rest of our yes. lives, Lord. Yes. We thank, thank you, Lord God. We are that glorious yes. church that we're coming for. And we declare it, Lord God, in faith. Even in spite of us, Lord, because you are so great. Yes. It's a little thing for you to use us <laughs> as salvation and light to the end of the world, Lord God. Yeah. But we know you're doing this even above and beyond us. Hallelujah. And we are in awe of it, Lord God. We glorify you for it, Lord God. We thank you because it is because of Jesus, because yeah. of your spirit. Because of your word and name. Yes. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Amen. Praise hey, God. Man, amen. Amen. Thank you, amen. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. We done had church. <laughs> <laughs> done had it. <laughs> Be blessed, everyone.